Hello everyone, I'm Ryan Chan, the CEO and founder of Upkeep. Today, we'll be diving into the world of efficient maintenance planning. We'll explore the best practices your team should be integrating into their routine and discuss the six guiding principles and seven performance pillars that every planner should adhere to. Plus, we'll be taking a look at some useful tools such as the Balance Scorecard. To cap it all off, we'll delve into a real-life application of these practices in a case study featuring Miller Coors. So, let's get started. First up, let's talk about basing decisions on data. When planning maintenance tasks, it's crucial to rely on data. A computerized maintenance management system is central to tracking this data, but it's important to actually use the information you're gathering. Key performance indicators for maintenance planning include preventive maintenance schedule compliance, ratio of emergency work orders to planned tasks, work order backlog, and mean time to repair. Using this data will help you assign the right priorities to tasks, avoid false prioritization, and see where work processes might be streamlined. Next, we need to prioritize tasks to support reliability. This means that work orders involving non-critical equipment or unlikely failures shouldn't be as high priority as those that involve critical assets. Essentially, you should focus preventive maintenance efforts towards reducing failures that represent a significant risk to your operations. Everything else is secondary except for emergencies. Another best practice is ensuring your maintenance technicians are properly equipped for each job. This means making sure the needed tools and replacement parts are available on site before assigning the task. In addition to replacement parts and tools, you should arrange for your technicians to have any relevant manuals and schematics in hand before they head out to the job site. They should also be able to access this information on a mobile device. Now, let's talk about getting out of the office. Maintenance planning is not strictly setting a schedule. It's not a desk job. Your maintenance planner should be out on site looking at the equipment. That way, they'll be fully aware of any potential issues that could complicate the job, such as access or safety problems. And lastly, strive for continuous improvement. Maintenance planners should be getting feedback from your technicians on each work order. If there are any issues with scheduling, time estimates, or materials, they should be made aware of those. As they receive feedback, they should implement it. This way, they can eliminate prior mistakes and make improvements the next time similar tasks come up. Now, let's move on to the six key maintenance planning principles according to Reliable Plan. These principles are designed to guide a planner in developing a work plan for each request. Firstly, planners must remain a standalone individual. They need to be focused on future projects and separated from the maintenance crew. This prevents planners from being pulled into emergency projects or current work. Secondly, planners must maintain a future focus. They should be working on tasks that are expected to be needed two weeks out. Once they create their plans, those should be given to maintenance managers for the upcoming week's schedule. Thirdly, planners should create mini files as they create individual documents for work plans, they should keep their information organized by mini file or at the component level. This organizational system will allow planners to build up useful data over time. Fourthly, planners must estimate time reasonably. They must have 10 to 15 years of experience to draw upon to create reasonable time estimates for jobs. Fifthly, planners should tailor plans to skill levels. They should know their technicians and their skill levels well so they can outline the scope of work and the strategy to match those skill levels. And lastly, planners should take work samples. By measuring wrench time, planners can determine how much more efficient technicians are working. Next up, we have the seven performance pillars in maintenance planning and scheduling. The first pillar is evaluating preventive maintenance checklists. The second pillar is designing work orders. The third pillar is developing work plans. The fourth pillar is staging inventory. The fifth pillar is dynamic scheduling. The sixth pillar is monitoring performance. And the seventh pillar is standardizing processes. Tools such as a balanced scorecard and strategy map can help companies better align maintenance planning goals with overall business goals. By outlining the steps a facility can take to improve its overall planning, a plant can not only reap the benefits of a strong scheduling program, but also illustrate how these results positively impact the entire company. By implementing best practice planning and scheduling procedures, many individuals within your organization will benefit. These include maintenance technicians, crew supervisors, and plant managers.
If you're ready to hire a planner or evaluate your current planning position, you may want to consider these critical characteristics for such a position. These include experience, understanding planning principles, being a people person, and having ordered thinking and communication skills. Finally, let's take a look at a real-life application of these best practices in a case study featuring Miller Coors. They faced significant production delays and downtime due to breakdowns. They realized they needed to shift from a reactive maintenance mode to a more proactive one. By implementing world-class planning and scheduling procedures, Miller Coors has seen a drop in costs, better reliability, and more stability throughout the production process. And that wraps up our discussion on maintenance planning best practices. Remember, the key to effective maintenance planning lies in data-driven decisions, prioritizing tasks, ensuring materials are available, getting out of the office, and continuous improvement. Thank you for watching. We've covered a lot today from the best practices in maintenance planning to the six guiding principles and seven performance pillars. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. Don't forget to visit our website at upkeep.com to learn more about our tools and resources designed to help maintenance and reliability teams be more successful.